Good afternoon and welcome to um, WTKK's luncheon, winning 10-10-10. Uh, I'm very honored. I'm Peter Smythe. I'm the chairman and chief executive officer of Greater Media. And on behalf of us, we welcome you here today, and I thank you for being here. Our honored guests today are Susie and Jack Welsh. They're going to bring a unique perspective on today's economy and on their award-winning book. They're going to be moderated today by our good friend and my dear pal and golfing partner, Mike Barnacle. So without any more, I would like to take this opportunity to introduce Mike Barnacle. Thank you very much. This should be interesting, hopefully. Interesting afternoon. Hi, how are you? Good to see you. Uh, our guests, Jack Welch and Susie Welch, uh, need no introduction, and usually I say, and therefore they'll get none. But uh, I should tell you something that I'm sure all of you know. Jack Welch is perhaps uh, America's most legendary CEO in charge of General Electric for 20, 25 years. Susie Welch, former editor of the Harvard Business Review, uh, and whose book, 101010, is available at Amazon.com, bookstores everywhere. Uh, you should get it, you should read it, you should study it, because it'll give you a new uh, uh, and expanded idea of what to do when you make decisions within your life, within your home, within your family. So I thought what we'd do, actually what Peter thought we'd do, is we will have a discussion, the Welches, I will try to prod them along with a few questions for about a half an hour, and then if there are any questions from out here in the audience, we'd be glad to take questions, and they will be glad to answer them. Knowing Jack as well as I do, if he does not know the answer, he'll make it up and no one will know the difference. <laughs> so without further ado, Jack and Susie Welch. knowing how you play. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I'm now about a 28 handicap. Uh, yeah, it is. You know what I thought where we might start, uh, because everybody in this room ostensibly is concerned with business and the state of the economy. Even if you're not in business, you're concerned with the state of the economy, having to do with simple tasks like paying a mortgage or paying college tuitions, is I would like to ask both of you uh, beginning with Mr. Welch, going to Mrs. Welch, uh, what you think of the economic team, not the policies, but the economic team that Barack Obama has assembled? Well, that's a bad question. <laughs> I mean, because you're going to get me to say they're smart, they're um, creative, and they have never worked a day in their life in a business. Well, that, 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 that begs the question, Susie, uh, editor of the Harvard Business Review, the, in, in the application of 101010 to government, they clearly had like 10 days to figure out this thing when they came in, uh, trying to figure out exactly the impact it would have on the next 10 months and where this country would be 10 years from now. But as your husband pointed out, and what kind of a liability is it, or isn't it, that they have very few people at the top of the economic team, Larry Summers, uh, Tim Geithner, uh, who have some sense of knowledge of the day-to-day -day operations of business? I, I think they're two separate issues. I think that there is the fact that the people who are on the economic team have not, don't have practical business experience, but if they are using 101010, which is a decision-making tool, just for those of you who have not um, uh, uh, you know, memorized my book, committed it to heart, um, is that, uh, that uh, you think about the consequences of your actions in 10 minutes, 10 months, and 10 years, this immediate future, foreseeable future, and long distant future. You know, frankly, I mean, even though the policies are not something that we agree with, I think they are thinking about the 10 year in that they are creating the America that they believe in. They are creating a different America than we've had in the past. So I do think they had to save the United States in 10 minutes and 10 months. It was a Nobody knew what was going to happen with the first stimulus if they hadn't, if they hadn't done that. The banks might have all gone under. And in well, 10 they years, didn't do the top. But, it, but looking ahead to 10 years, they may be creating something. Like we like to say, well, we don't like the America they're creating. But they are creating an America they were elected to create, perhaps. 
I agree. So that, that gets you to the, the prior administration, although very few people like to look at the prior administration, in terms of, you know, 10, 10, 10, this administration looking at things in terms of 10, 10, 10. Did the prior administration not look at things in terms of the, the 10 months or the 10 years? How did so many people, supposedly smart people, miss what was coming for such a long period of time? Okay. You want to well, I think, no, I'll be happy to. I, I think without question, uh, they got into an Iraq war that took their eye off the ball uh, and the economic policies fell by the wayside in many ways. We had an unregulated game. Capitalism went off the tracks. And when capitalism goes off the tracks, you have to put in systems to get it back on track. So uh, I think the Iraq war, the enormous animosity towards them because of the stance they took on the Iraq war, which polarized the country, got us fighting about whether we should be in Iraq, we shouldn't be in Iraq, and we let the economy float by itself. Now, I do think that Hank Paulson and Ben Bernanke, Ben Bernanke in particular, has saved this game. In, in, in September and October, late October, I think it was October 17th to be precise, we almost lost the banking system. It was about over. Uh, co co commercial paper markets had closed. There was no way to do business on Monday if they didn't come in and throw an enormous amount of backstops to free the liquidity up in the system. So while they blew it off the tracks, Ben Bernanke through this whole thing, in my own opinion, there may be other opinions and would be happy to hear about him, has been an American hero. He's done an incredible job of keeping us, of getting us back on the game. And Paulson had the courage to go into that Congress with a one-page document and saying, this is what I need to do. Give me $750 billion of top, top money. And he threw $375 billion of it out fast and I think arrested a disaster. So I, am, I have no, no great hold for the last administration economically. I think they spent like drunks and we're paying for it. Susie, the, the, the collapse occurred clearly, you know, over a period of many, many months and years. And a, a lot of editorial finger pointing would indicate that, it, that it's because of uh, an era of greed, an era of, of, of selfishness, an era of regulators not doing their jobs. What do you think? What do you see when you look back? The great parlor game of our day is trying to figure out who's to blame for what happened. And I think it's like that, um, Agatha Christie book, Murder on the Orient Express, where, you know, at the end, every single person was the, killed, the, put the knife into the victim. I mean, there are the regulators who weren't there. There were uh, uh, scurrilous uh, people who were making home loans that shouldn't have. There were irresponsible people who were taking out home loans that they shouldn't have. There were the rating agencies that just did very um, terrible things, but they really just gave away ratings when they should have. I mean, the list is long. There's boards of directors which hold some responsibility. I mean, in a way, who, who wasn't responsible? Jack Welch, there's government. Explain that. Talk <laughs> about that. Well, your great congressman from this district, uh, right around here, Bonnie Frank, was out screaming about, oh, these, the, these GMAs cause no problem, oh, GSAs cause no problem at all. Fannie Mae, just keep giving more loans. We have an obligation to give low-cost loans. We've got to keep doing it. And he actually, he and Chris Dodd pushed the hell out of this thing. And the, the banks responded, and the country responded. But uh, the government has yet to have a mea culpa. There's been, got businesses walking around with a hair shirt saying, I'm sorry. Uh, most of the country saying, I'm sorry. And government has yet, yet, to make, make a comment. Bonnie Frank has yet to admit, even with television before and after, of what he said had any role in this thing. It's, it's, a, it's crime. I'm sure you all voted for him, so congratulations. 